So yes, Russian army tricked my friend and sent him to Ukraine. And this is how it happened. So I have this friend in Russia who I used to know since I was a kid. I still remember whenever me and my cousin were playing some video games and this guy was helping us to proceed some complicated levels because he was always older than us. And long story short, he was he since the begin since the beginning of this special military operation, he became this your typical Z patriot. He was not as crazy as maybe like shouting or anything like this or openly hating America, West or Ukraine, but he was still making the very same statements that the Russian propaganda was claiming on TV. And basically, as a result of this, all his uh, relatives, all his friends, all his co-workers, they knew him, they saw him in this way. And one of his phrases he used to say is that in case I get summoned, I will go 100%. But the thing is, deep inside he always felt like that he does not actually want to go. And so obviously I'll be intentionally not mentioning his name to protect the security of his friends or relatives. So let's continue. Back in September of 2022, whenever there was partial mobilization announced in Russia, he became extremely cautious. Now he really did not want to get summoned. But unfortunately, one day he was still at home, he heard a knock on the door, and there they were. These were the military office representatives. And at that time in Russia, if they don't see you in person, you are technically not legally obliged to go to this enlistment office. But he unfortunately did a mistake, he did show up in front of them, he received his military summons, but they, they said, don't worry, this is just to double check your information, there is uh, nothing to worry about. And this was the very first lie. And so yes, since that very moment, he was legally obliged to go to the enlistment office for this quote-unquote military medical checkup. And since that very first day when he just received it, my father offered him to take him out of the country, to go to Georgia, Turkey, anywhere else, just not to be in Russia. But he declined. And this was his first mistake. He just had this crazy idea in his head that all the things he said in the past to his friends, relatives or anyone else, co-workers, etc., that Ukraine needs to be denazified, Russia is the greatest and the strongest country, I will go if I get summoned. And now he had just to prove his people surrounding him that he is the basically man of his word. At that very moment it already became extremely obvious that he did not want to go to this military enlistment office and do anything with the military, but he felt like that it was his reputation on the line, so he was forced to do it. My father still kept suggesting every single day to take him out of the country, but he just kept denying and denying. He became, I would say, the hostage of his own words, which is pretty much exactly what the Russian propaganda wants you to think in this case. And so yes, the day of his medical checkup came, he went to the office, and unfortunately the military representatives, they said that he might actually be summoned into the military. This is not just the medical checkup, even though it is just a part of it. But don't worry, they said, just please, do not worry. We know that you have some engineering qualifications, so maximum what you're going to be doing is just fixing some military equipment right here from Moscow. Don't worry. And this was the second lie. And eventually they made him buy the majority of his military equipment, because either it was missing or maybe the quality was just so bad, it'll be just better to get your own. And the very last day before the departure, he organizes in his apartment like the last dinner with his maybe. And basically yes, the people were drinking, they were having fun, but it was him all alone with his sadness in his eyes, and you just clearly can see that he does not want to go. The only thing that kept him calm is that he was promised that he will not be fighting in Ukraine, he'll be just fixing things in Moscow. And eventually it turned out to be a lie, and this is how it happened. After being stationed in one of the training camps outside of Moscow, 
there was an order from above as it usually happens in the Russian army, that they have to be relocated somewhere closer to Ukraine, but not in Ukraine itself, just in one of its neighboring regions. And they justify it by saying that it will be inconvenient to bring all this military equipment all the way from Ukraine to Russia, to Moscow, so let's just bring you closer instead. Don't worry, you will not be fighting, you'll just be fixing some things close to Ukraine, but not in the country itself. And whenever he arrived to his new location, the military training continued. Fast forward couple of weeks and not a single military equipment being brought to him to be repaired. There is another order from above that now he has to be stationed already in Ukraine. But they said, as always, don't worry. You're not going to be fighting, you're just going to be somewhere deep in Luhansk region, away from the combat activities and the front lines. And at that point, unfortunately, it became pretty clear to him that he was not brought here to repair anything, he was brought here to actually fight. And as soon as he crossed the border, it became even worse, because all the communications with him became extremely rare. He was only allowed one call per day or maximum per week, and only with his closest relatives, just to basically let them know that he is alive and well. He was not allowed to share any information anymore, not his location, not what he is doing, not where he is planning to go next, not a single order to be discussed. And then, several weeks later, as you might have imagined, another order from above approaches, which says that now they have to be relocated to Svatovia, which is already pretty much the front line in the east. And at that point, all the communications with him became barely possible. And according to his wife, which is pretty much the only person who was able to talk to him just once per week at best, the only thing he was talking about is just that he wants to be back home and to never trust the Russian army in the first place, to never go to this medical examination and double-checking information and to never trust that they will not send him into Ukraine. And so yes, if you want to keep up with his story, please consider subscribing to my channel and I will make an update in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for attention, Tavarishi, and see you on Wednesday.